So you're probably wondering why I'm wearing a suit and standing on a staircase. Well, I'm actually not in any place. I'm not in our studio this time. I'm actually at News 8 to talk about life of a meteorologist. So we're gonna do a whole, basically, the whole thing today about meteorology, which is pretty cool. And I got the opportunity to do it, so I took it. So hope you enjoy this latest episode of Words of Weather. So guys, we are here. This is News 8, this is actually the newsroom. I gotta be a little quiet because there's a lot of noise going on in here because they're trying to look at stories. But here's the our trip into the studio. So let's see how it goes, guys. So basically, today we're going to News 8 and I'm gonna figure out what I wanna do in the future and that's a broadcast meteorologist. So if you follow me, we're gonna go right into the new studio. Now we have to be quiet because this is where all the magic happens. This is the actual new studio, so let's see what happens when you go inside, guys. And there you go. Welcome to Storm Team 8 and WTNH.com and News 8. So guys, today I'm joined here by the one and only meteorologist Sam Cantrell. The, the one and only is yes, nice. From it's News 8, Storm Team 8. So how have you been, Sam? Good, man. No so, problems. No complaints. Okay. No, it's I'm living dream, honestly. And you know, no snow, which is actually, you know, a lot of kids ask me, where's the snow? There's just not a lot of snow here. Listen, you know as well as I do that we can get snow in February, we can get snow in March. No, so the winter's you, not even over. It's going to happen. And the funny thing is happen. also, you know, now we're on the topic of snow, everybody always forgets that we're not even a third of the way through winter time. Right? I'm trying to think of the dates. Yeah, we're barely, we're not even a third of the way through winter time. So we've got months, month. yeah, months, months of winter time. Exactly. Go. And you know, the, the pattern is... is you know, it's hard to forecast. Lawrence forecasting is really difficult. You know, I look at models like everyone else does. But I still think, you know, the negative ending, you know, the blocking, the, you know, the uh, Greenland high, they call it, all this technical stuff. If it does set up in the next few weeks with plenty of cold Arctic air in place, you can easily get a few coastal storms. So, But it will, we're not going to know about it until we're a couple days beforehand. That's of, the funny of thing. Course. And people talk to me about this all the time. People always ask, they say, okay, you're, you're a meteorologist, you're on TV, and, and your job is to tell people what the weather's going to be like. And that's normal. But it is very difficult, as you know, and as you've spoken with many meteorologists, to do a long-range forecast like that, you know, it's hard enough to predict four days out. It's hard I know. To, for me to tell you what's going to happen this afternoon, you know, so I mean, it's things, tough. Things, of things course, change, to do that. you know. I mean, obviously, weather is one of the most changeable things, and you know, in, in ever, you know, it's not an exact science. You know, you can forecast it, you can't change it. Of course, but, you know, and every model run changed, and that's the thing. One model run, the European could show a bomb of a storm coming up the coast. The next could be thousand miles out to sea. It just well, one of I'll those give you, I'll give you an example right now. Okay, today is today is. We're, when we're speaking is the 18th. Yes. And right now today, Saturday, next week, um, the Euro for Thursday is showing a snowstorm with upwards of 10 inches of snow wow. or so. <laughs> and the GFS shows absolutely nothing. It shows a, a storm off the coast that doesn't even affect our weather at all, and we end up seeing more sunshine than clouds. So that's, you know, that's the un unfortunate and, <laughs> you know, this is what we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, yes. the variable nature of predicting meteorology. Now, the yes. unfortunate thing about <laughs> being on the air when we're predicting that is that, of course, we're the ones that are physically in front of a television yes. that are saying that too, whether it be hundreds of people or thousands of people um, that are watching us. So you get the blame, more so or less. So we, of course, <laughs> get the blame. And of course, I've heard all the jokes. I've heard the, oh, you're the only job who can keep getting paid and keep getting raises to be wrong. And you know, I hear that. But the fact is, there is a level of, of unpredictability. And that's exactly. just the nature of the beast. And you know, thanks for that. And I also want to point out that today we're filming it since Saturday the 18th. I also want to give a kind of dedication. It was actually two years ago today that the late Dr. That's Mel. Right passed away and I was got a chance to meet him at the great studio here at News 8 and basically the first time I ever got to meet him and, and use a green screen and that yeah, basically is going to push me to go to the college because it's not going to be easy and you know I, I want to be a broadcast meteorologist so I just want to you know dedicate this show more than anyone to Dr. Mel who passed away two years ago today 
um, at 66 due to cancer, which is very sad. Mm -hmm. So before I continue, I just want to shout that out. But now back to the meteorology aspect. So what do you do here? I mean, obviously you use the green screen, you know, but how do you make your forecast? Obviously look at the miles, but how do you physically make a forecast here? Well, I'll tell you, the interesting thing about what I do here is that because of the nature of the, cha the changing nature of, of the business of TV, lots, lots of things have changed in a very short period of time. Even over the course of the last six or so years that I really kind of got into the, the world of TV and an inter internship in college, you know, actually working this job, things have changed a lot with how we get the forecast from looking up at the individual forecast models, which I could spend an hour talking to you about how I make a <laughs> forecast, but from that point to you actually being able to see that on TV. Yes. Now, it's changed a lot because before I even get things on TV, my number one priority, interestingly enough, is getting the web stuff taken care of. Nice. It's a very important thing to do. We have as many people that are clicking on our websites, if not even more people that are clicking on our websites, as we do people who are getting uh, the forecast from the on-air stuff. And that's stuff. because obviously not saying that no one watches it, but the fact no. that you can get it 24-7, so but if you want a, a quick the, update, you can always go. It's the changing nature of the way that media is these days, where if I'm on TV and I'm standing in front of the green screen, or I'm standing in front of the weather center that you guys can see behind you, and I say, okay, tonight, uh, tonight at 11 o'clock, we're going to give you the details on some snow that we could be seeing for the day tomorrow. All right, what are most people going to do, the, especially the younger generation? The first thing they're going to do is they're going to grab their phones and they're going to go, I'm not going to wait till 11 p.m. tonight. I'm going to go immediately to a website and check it out. Exactly. So what do we try and do? We try and make sure that we have all of our web stuff updated as early as possible before we're even on the air so that way we can say to people that either don't have the time to watch us on the air or don't want to watch us on the air, hey listen, we've, you know, we've got your back, that's the News 8 saying, <laughs> with all different types of media, whether it be online or on the air also. Exactly, and I mean iPhone apps are great for weather too, but at the same time they're kind of a nuisance because everyone says, you know what I mean, Zach, no, a blizzard's coming. That's what the, you know the you know the uh, AccuWeather.com app says. And that's you know, what I'm but. glad you're mentioning that because that's one of the big things too. And people ask me all the time. They say, "What's the best website to go to get weather?" And I say, depending on where you live, it's a local TV station's exactly. website because they're forecasting for. I'm doing a forecast right now for New Haven. I'm doing a forecast for Hartford. I'm doing a forecast for. Windsor Locks or Canaan or whatever town around the state of Connecticut that I'm doing. What the National Weather Service is doing is they're making a forecast for New York City, they're making a forecast for Boston, and they're making a forecast for Albany. The same sort of thing that weather.com is doing, they're doing the same stuff, AccuWeather. They're doing the forecast for these larger places and sort of extrapolating kind of a balance between the two. Exactly. They don't necessarily know the way that the weather works in Connecticut where sometimes exact, yeah. sometimes in the Northwest Hills that's where we end up getting the bullseye and snow because the higher elevation areas end up seeing that whereas lower elevations don't see it as much or maybe we can forecast fog and valley regions along the Connecticut River and that's the kind of stuff. So now as far as us actually getting the forecast from looking at the forecast models, having a physical forecast on a piece of paper to getting it on the air, that requires us to put all of that information into a weather graphic system that we have. Yes. And we basically use a program that we input the individual information, sort of like a, an Excel spreadsheet, you could say, and what we're doing with that is we physically put the numbers in. So we put 82 degrees for a high, 64 degrees for a low, and go down the line, select specific icons, whether it be cloudy or rainy or chance of rain or chance of <laughs> late rain or thunderstorms. I mean, we have an array of different icons that we can select. We select all those individual icons, we save it, and that sort of automatically fills in in a forecast like the eight-day forecast that yes. we have. So basically everything comes comes into one. Mm -hmm. And you know, and we're actually looking at right here at some monitors behind here, guys. We'll show you later in the show um, how all this works. But it's actually pretty cool. You know, there's you know almost a dozen computer monitors here, and that's how they to make the forecast. And again, it's not as easy as it looks. No. I was just getting a you know a few peek back there a little, a little while ago, and it's definitely tricky to get everything done. But I would say this is the fun part and then the more you know, interesting and, and I would say more professional part is actually learn how to, to use that data to make an accurate forecast. Of course, right and that's the most difficult thing and that's one thing that, that sometimes people that do television weather forget about and it is very important that I come in here two hours before the show starts. Yes. In the, over the course of the two hours, I have to do an array of different things from making the forecast to building the graphics to unfortunately putting makeup on to <laughs> you know, getting the microphone on and, and getting ready to be on the air, putting the graphics in the right order. But what many people that work in TV weather forget is that the most important thing to do is the forecast. That's the whole idea. That's the name of the game. That's the reason why I'm here. Yes. So when I have two hours in the building before the show starts. You'd think, okay, you spend a half hour making the forecast, a half hour making the graphics, 20 minutes putting the makeup on, and then you know, a half hour getting stuff together for the show that you have. 
I probably spent out of the f out of the course of those two hours an hour and thirty five or an hour and forty minutes just making the forecast every day. Whether yes. it's boring and there's not much weather happening, or there's a lot of weather happening. You know, the eight day forecast at least right now there's only one chance of any real storm yes. and the models don't even agree with each other so a lot of it is is pretty well set in stone with you know cold temperatures the question is how cold is it going to get okay fine it's not a crazy forecast but yes. you still want to look at everything so that you can always keep things fresh in your head and there can also be some things that you you look at and you say oh wait a minute i didn't even think about that and and it helps improve your forecasting ability in general so it's, from it, there to getting on the air it's not a very long process it's five or so minutes for me to get the makeup on, a couple minutes for me to finish putting everything into the graphic system, and then a few minutes for me to build the show that we have, the basically PowerPoint presentation, yes. and then that's it, we're on the air from there. Anyway, and for, he mentioned the makeup guy, it's not to cover up any blemishes on your face, it's more or less just because the lighting, that's exactly with the it. cameras kind of interact. If, if you take a picture, and, you, and I'm sure you've seen this before, someone takes a photo with a bright flash, it makes your whole face look shiny. Exactly. There are lots of lights on top of where we are yes. right now, where Shining we're chatting, <laughs> and that, exactly, and that, um, that helps get rid of it, and also, you know, it does help with blemishes and stuff like that. The idea behind working in TV is they don't want anything to be distracting for you, uh, for the viewer who is watching it on the air. So if you've got big things all over your face, then it, it's a little bit distracting. So just one sort of even tone, and it's not the most fun part of my yeah. day. We'll just say that. That I, and shaving are, probably, my, are my two least favorite parts, <laughs> I can tell you. Yes, I could probably figure that out myself as Absolutely. well. Let me just point out, guys, there's a few different weathermen meteorologist types. Sam is a meteorologist. He has a Bachelor's of Science mm -hmm. in Meteorology science degree, from yep. Western Connecticut State University, mm -hmm. where I will be attending this fall. So he has a degree. He's not just someone that they throw on air because he looks good. He actually, I mean, you're a handsome guy. Thanks, so, Paul. But, you know, and he actually has a degree. He knows he's talking about, and that's the difference. I want to be a meteorologist. I don't want to just look good on TV. I want to yeah. understand the atmosphere. And that's and one of the things that, that you'll learn when you're studying in college, and that's one of the things that people oftentimes learn when you do get a degree in operational meteorology, which is what I have. Um, the main focus is the weather. The main focus is the meteorology. I took one class in college that had anything to do with with actual broadcasting standing in front of a green screen. The rest yes. of it is primarily geared towards you learning the meteorology behind it. The rest of the stuff, those are things that you can learn as time goes on. You can exactly. hone in on your like I'm doing right now. <laughs> exactly. Hone in on your on-air ability and your ability to do interviews, et cetera, et cetera. But the most important thing at the end of the day is was my forecast correct or was it not correct? Exactly. And, and that's, that's that's the big thing. And that's why you go to college for four years and that's why we're not majoring in communications. We're majoring in operational meteorology or theoretical meteorology, yes, whichever track option you're Basically the way I think about it is as a broadcast meteorologist, not any other meteorologist but a broadcast meteorologist guys, you have basically two majors. You're obviously a meteorologist as you, as you said you're number one. Mm -hmm. You want to get the forecast how you want to be good, accurate, reliable. But your number two is you have to be good on TV which is broadcast journalism. So you basically almost have two majors into one. Yeah. So it, it gets confusing using it kind of interesting but you know I, I love talking as you can probably tell so hopefully this is the easy part and the hard part so I was going to be learning the math and science because there's you know like I said well through the calculus and and you know atmospheric therm thermodynamics which yep. is one of the huge core Geophysical courses. Geophysical hydrodynamics. Yes yeah, so physics. lots of math and science courses to do but this is what I want to do and uh, hopefully it gets done in a few years and hopefully maybe I'll be sitting in front of here one day. Hope so cool. buddy. Yeah so thanks for your time Sam. You're very welcome. And later on the show guys I'm going to just you know do a little more in depth with the studio. I'm going to show you how to do the green screen later on. I'm going to do a little few things. So it should be interesting. So guys, stay tuned. And hopefully we'll continue the show going on at News 8. Okay guys, so this is the infamous green screen, the magic wall, the green wall, whatever you want to call it. And basically what happens is, this is just a green wall right here, as you can see, just green. But basically, they're, they're, it's called live chroma key. And basically all they do is throw an image behind it but there's obviously, this is green, there's nothing there. But what happens is I have monitors in front of me and to the sides of me. And these monitors are used to guess and check. So right now, actually, though you guys can't see it, there's a camera of Middletown. If I step to the side this way, it's 34 degrees right now with clouds of Middletown. Now the only reason why I could do this is because I have monitors right here. I'm looking right here and I have a camera right in front of me. So this is how the green screen works. And then you have a clicker and you click through all of it. It's pretty interesting. It's really tough to do, but I'm going to give a shot at a live forecast using this green screen a little bit. Okay guys, so this is my shot at doing live chroma key, also known as the live green screen effect. So right now, it's 34 degrees in Middletown with a pretty murky sky. We've got clouds, low level clouds, and some precipitation falling, mostly in the form of some mix of rain and snow. Nothing too heavy, but definitely something to keep an eye on throughout the day. As you can see with the live satellite and radar, we actually have a lot of more moisture coming out from the south, going basically south to north, and more or less, this is going to be the trend throughout the day. But I don't expect a lot of precipitation because it's not a mega storm, it's kind of growing from the, the warm waters of the ocean, so that's why it's coming up from north to south. There's actually a, a decent band that looks like of snow 
in the western third of Connecticut, but I think it's a lot of mixed precipitation. I think the radar is really not picking up on the warmer layers in the uh, boundaries of the atmosphere. So I think a lot of this actually may be rain or a mix rather than full snow. But hey, there could be some snow definitely in Northern Connecticut today. So maybe a dusting, maybe a half inch, I would see at maximum right now. Temperatures are still marginally warm, so I don't know if that's actually even possible. But on the colder surfaces, that's possible. As you can tell with temperatures right now that are around freezing in 20 and 31 degrees, so there you may get a little bit of snow. But again, it's hard to totally tell because the ground temperature, if it's a little bit warmer, the snow is hard to stick. We also have 33 in Windsor Locks. We have 36 in downtown New Haven and Hamden, right from our hometown. We're probably around 34, 35 degrees at a given time. Bridgeport, we're at 37. And right here in New London, we're around 40 degrees. So there, I don't think we have to really worry about too much icing as temperatures are close to 40 degrees, which will not support ice. The big talk in the weather world right now is not storms, but actually more or less the temperatures. You can see right here, it's the mid-30s to even around 40 today, but then we go down to the teens later in the week. So that's gonna be the next thing to talk about is not actually the snow, rather the cold temperatures that are coming. And there are plenty of cold to talk about. The Arctic air is coming in. Snow is the question. Snow is going to be hard to forecast these next few days, but definitely looking at a big Arctic blast that could last potentially for a week or two, even farther, looking into the long range forecast. So your short term forecast for today, we have temperatures that will be around 40, give or take a few degrees, obviously a slightly cooler in northern Connecticut and a little bit warmer in the shoreline. With the wind, yeah, it will be noticeable, but nothing crazy, about 10 to 15 miles per hour. And again, just on and off snow and rain showers, trend, trending to more rain showers as the day goes on. Again, nothing too big to worry about tonight. To watch for some icy patches. I think the wind will dry out most areas, so there may be a few icy spots for ground for a late time walk or more early morning jog. But just be in mind that there could be some icy patches, but again, I think the wind will help lessen the chance for patches. And again, maybe a flurry, but nothing to talk about really, you know, an accumulation or anything. An eight day forecast looks very changeable. It's going to be a gradual change, but we go from the low 40s today to around 40 until Monday. And if you watch when I move out of the way, we go from 24 to 20. And then there's actually some indication that these numbers may be a little conservative. There could actually be even colder temperatures in the teens throughout the week. And as you can see, inland always is going to be a tad colder than the shoreline. And again, the next chance for precipitation we come Thursday. Some of the models hinting maybe a snow is not a major storm, but some snow event. Again, it's way too early to tell. The models are having trouble figuring this out. But the trend for the next few days is definitely just cold weather. So hope you enjoyed the forecast today, guys. This is my first shot at using the live chroma key wall. It's green screening. It's really fun to do. It's a little tricky. But this is hopefully what I'll be doing for my future. So it's a good practice, I would say, shot. So this is my first shot ever at a live full forecast using the green screen. So guys, it's kind of sad. It's time to wrap it up here at News 8, but I had a great time. I have to give a special thanks once again to meteorologist Sam Cantrell and the whole, whole News 8 team here, really, to help me make this day possible. It's a dream come true, and I hope to be here maybe in five, six years <clears throat> as a meteorologist myself. Next time on Words of Weather, I'm probably going to talk about winter because it looks like right now the cold is coming back and snow could easily follow as the cold airs in. Obviously, you got enough cold air, some storm systems, you got a big snowstorm coming. So I think winter is going to get worse as the next few weeks go on, but um, we'll have to see how that goes. So the next time I'll probably do something with snow, maybe another interview or something, I'm not really sure, but definitely talk about the winter forecast because I think it's definitely picking up. But for here, I'm signing off at News 8 in New Haven, WTNH, right here studio. I'm Zach Duane and this is Words of Weather.